Now let's move on and look at uh, the thing I've leave to last because for most people it's the least uh, attractive aspect of memory or indeed of life itself is memory for numbers. <coughs> it's very curious that if a child comes home from school and says to the their parents, I can't do arithmetic, the parents immediately say, no, I, it's awful, isn't it? No, I couldn't do that either. If the same child came home from school and said, I can't read or write, there'd be hell to pay. So it's okay in our culture to be enumerate, but not so good to be illiterate. However, there are three systems which I'm going to t tell you about. Uh, the first one relies on images again. And images and rhymes. What you do is you create an image, uh, a rhyming image, because it just makes it e a little bit easier, for each of the nine integers and a further one for zero. And obviously from that you can create any number you want. So one is a bun, two is a shoe, three is a tree, four is a door, five is a hive, six is a brick, seven is heaven, I, I tend to think of a, a figure of an angel, uh, eight is a plate, nine is a swine or a pig, and zero is a ball, because it doesn't rhyme, but it just kind of looks like a ball. And using that, you can actually remember numbers quite easily. So, for example, if you wanted to remember, say you have a pin number, or passcode or something, which is 2691501, you would think quite easily, you'd think of a shoe, two is a shoe, a shoe shaped like a brick, creating a little mind movie. Uh, and the, the brick shoe is being worn by a pig, and the pig is guzzling on a bun. Okay, and the, uh, bu bu the bun is in a beehive, uh, and uh, with one leg, the, the pig is bouncing a ball. Okay, so you create a little movie there. And uh, if we just go back to the, uh, well, we can't actually, I haven't got a slide here, but if you look at, uh, if, if you, you could remember that number quite easily, if you push a shoe, it's two, brick, swine, bun, hive, fold. So that's quite a good technique for remembering. You have bun on the end, Bun, what? Oh, we've got, we got, we got another bun. Yeah. <laughs> well spotted. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, another bun, right. Okay, now the problem, my problem with this kind of technique, and this is a technique which, uh, which is widely used and widely taught, and it does work very well, is it, it gets a bit repetitive when you come to a number which is 14 digits long, like 14 decimal places. Or, and I just think the repetition to my, in my, my head of buns and angels and things that just get, I mean, one way of doing that, of course, would be to use the method of loci and just go on your imaginary journey and so you, you leave your front door, for example, to go for a walk, uh, and, and, and the first, first uh, immediately outside your front door is a tree, for example. And then you see hanging from the tree are, are buns. And in the side of a tree is a door, and you go through the door, and there are more buns in there. Uh, and there's a beehive. Do you see what I mean? You can create a, you, a method of loci will work very well. <laughs> I actually think that there are better methods for lo remembering numbers. Lo lengthy numbers. Uh, although the, the, probably the most famous memory man in the world is, was a Russian called S, who was studied by a Russian neurologist called Luria. And uh, S, who'd worked as a journalist in Moscow, he was noted by his editor that he never ever took any notes anywhere. And he demonstrated he could remember everything. He, in fact, remembered everything. Everything. He never forgot anything, apparently. He would look at a, this was in the 1920s and 30s, he would look at a timetable for the trains from Leningrad to St. Petersburg or whatever. Or are they one and the same? They yes, they wanted the same, aren't they? Yes. Well, that would be a short journey. All right, Leningrad to Moscow. This is very confusing, the Soviet Union, because they keep on changing all their names. First it's St. Petersburg, then it's Leningrad, then it's St. Petersburg. Okay, okay so, uh, but he could look at the timetable and he would remember it perfectly. And he apparently used this kind of technique. He would see numbers, he would see numbers as images instantly. So, uh, how can we do it if we're not going to do it like this? Well, that was what it would look like in the rhyming imagery system. It's kind of it's kind of a bit tedious to me. Uh, so why not turn it into a phrase where the number of letters in each of the words is the number you want? And I, I mean, this is actually quite memorable. How I want to drink, alcoholic, of course, after the heavy chapters involving quantum mechanics. Now that's a lot easier to remember than than uh, <laughs> fourteen places of decimals. Okay, and it works. See, three, one. Four, one, five, etc. It works. Works perfectly. Yeah.
so, so that's, that's one way you could do it. And uh, I find that quite useful when I've got to remember, when I've got to remember um, p pin numbers and stuff like that. Because I can create a very, a very simple phrase like this. So this, is a, this is not a number. I, there's no point in putting it into the nearest ATM. <laughs> 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 but uh, what, I, what I would do, what I'd uh, created to, uh, for reasons I had to learn that number, was my uncle sometimes says eating raw fruit is delicious. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just much easier to remember for me at least, and trying to remember a long code like that. The other way, uh, and I'll come on to that, is to chunk numbers up. Chunking is a very good way of, of remembering long spellings, or in, in America, where they teach uh, children to spell Mississippi, which is a bit of a swine to spell, um, they will get them to chunk it into threes and, and then chart it. M-I-S, S-I-S, S-I-P-P-I. -S -S Chunking and breaking things down is a very, very uh, good way of doing it. But that's another technique. Now, the next, ne the next technique uh, is uh, <coughs> perhaps, on the face of it, the most complicated of all, so I'll spend a little time looking at it. It's to use a phonetic code. This relates back to a system which was developed in medieval England called the Major System. And what you do is you... F it's the, although we're using letters here, we're actually, they're actually phonetical sounds. So t or d, for example, they're the same. They're, and there's one downward stroke. So that represents one. These are all consonants, by the way. Two is n. Well, you've got two little downward strokes for two. M is three. You've got three little downward strokes for, for m. R is four. The, the word four ends in an R, so it's kind of easy. L, well, if you hold your five finger of your hand like that, it forms an L. Uh, L is, is Roman numeral for 50, so it's another clue. Uh, the six backwards, you remember Dominic was talking about using images to remember numbers. He talked about the schoolyard. You go into the school gate, and th there's, a, there's a clock over the school gate which says 1415. That was the time. And then you're walking down the path, and there's... I think there was a balloon, wasn't there? And the balloon was floating in the air, and he saw that as a number nine. And then there was a swan, it was a two. And then he went into the chapel where a 65-year-old was marrying a 35-year-old. So that, that's the way he did it. So you can use shapes of numbers. But I, I find this is actually quite a good technique. Uh, so six is, is a j, a j, or a ch, or sh. Remember, it's phonetic. Uh, K is a ha, or g. And these, a K kind of looks like two sevens back to back. F, a cursive F, looks like an 8. And I'm going to give you a very good mnemonic for remembering all these in a second. Uh, P or B backwards uh, is 9. See, so that's the, that's the whole idea. And, and 0 is an S or a Z for 0. Now, I know that looks, wow, that's an awful thing to remember. It's actually not that hard to remember, um, particularly with the mnemonic I'm going to give you now. But, you know, for a lot of... For a lot of for a lot of people, it's just too much time. You do have to learn that code. Um, so what you then do is to put vowels, or you can use, also use a W, because W counts as kind of an honorary vowel, um, at a formal word. So 43 you might, is an R. Remember the four, the R of the four. And three is an M, because there are three downward strokes on the M for three. So you've got an R and an M. And you simply put a word, a, a, a vowel, between the two consonants to make a, to make a word. Is this all right? <laughs> So you might want to remember 43 by rim or ram, for example. Uh, 67. Well, s 6 is, is a J or a K, uh, and uh, J and a K, rather, so that we might spell joke. You've got two vowels in there, and, any, and a longer, word, longer numbers, 3, 2, 1, <coughs> 5. Well, an M for the 3, an N for the 2, a T or a D, do you remember, for the 1, and an L for the, uh, for the 5. And from that, you could create mantle just by putting in some vowels. So do you see, you're using a word, but you're using the phonetic sounds of the consonants to give you that. And that can be quite effective. And you can really remember very lengthy um, numbers with that, create, creating words like that. So for example, uh, this, this number we looked at earlier, uh, 2 is an N, two downward strokes. 6 is a J, remember the backwards J. B is a 9. Like a, 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 a lowercase b looks a bit like a nine. That's, sorry, it's interesting. You've got the n, two downward strokes, using the upper capital. That yeah, well, it should be all in lowercase, but it's a bit hard to see. Hmm. Well, that's confusing, isn't it? 
Well, no, just think of N. Don't, we don't even think of N. I mean, just you're thinking of the phon <laughs> phonetical sound. So from that, you could remember that by some new job at last. I mean, it takes a bit of time and practice to get into this system. But if you remember this mnemonic code, uh, 10 more logic fibs. And that will give you each of the phonetic sounds of, of the numbers 1 to 9 and 0. 10 more logic fibs. So even with uppercase N and M, you have actually got two bits of things resting on the imaginary line. Yeah, but if you follow it through, as you write it, you don't get two down. No, but it's a kind of looking at... I mean, you can invent your own, yeah. by all means, invent your own phonetic sounds. Just remember, you've got to use phonetic sounds. So a j or a sh or a ch are all the same in this particular coding system. Now, when you're given a number, I spoke a little bit earlier about chunking. It's very, very important to break things down. If you're given a long number to remember, and you can't write it down, try and break the number into groups of three. And repeat each group very rapidly to yourself. So, two, three, nine, five, seven, four, eight, three, six. You'd break that down into two, three, nine, pause, five, seven, four, pause, eight, three, six, pause. And it often helps you if you create a rhythm for yourself by, by tapping your foot. And that will help you remember a long number. But I mean, I think the thing with memory is to be sensible about it. There's, there's no point in trying to remember things unless you have to remember them. It's good things to learn to practice your memory. But, but don't be afraid. We are surrounded by external aids. Paper and pencil being the cheapest and the, the one which runs without any power at all. Um, but when you're remembering something, remember it properly. So use these techniques when you need to remember something, not just for anything. You know, treat your memory with respect. You're never going to fill your memory. There's no, no, you're not going to run out of memory. You're not going to suddenly come to one day, well, wow, my memory is completely full. I must you know, clear my hard drive instantly of everything which happened before 1975. Um, but nonetheless, they are these techniques, they do work. I, I haven't discouraged you from writing because it's a good way of putting things into your memory. We will actually um, make all these slides available to you on the internet. We'll email them to you. We we'll, won't email you the uh, images because it's a, something like a 30 megabyte file, which your server if, probably if you won't. you don't have internet... Um, uh, we'll, we will uh, send you some notes. Thank you. Because um, one of my beliefs is that computers are taking away memory. There is a strong view of that. I certainly think our memories are a lot worse than they were in the days of the Greeks, mm. when they didn't have auto cue, yeah. when they actually had to remember a three-hour, four-hour legal argument. Or right. So let me just sum up now. How are we doing? We, we've done quite well today. Uh, so I'll have time for some questions if you've got some. Use imagery. Do develop your powers of imagery. It's the most powerful, basic skill that we all possess. Use imagery. Create scenes for yourself. Prepare yourself mentally before you try to remember anything. Remember that simple breathing technique. In for five seconds, out for ten seconds. With practice, you'll automatically go into that mental state whenever you start to learn something or remember things. And control attention, focus attention. Selective attention will cause you to see things which sometimes aren't there. If you've ever done any proofreading, you'll know it's extremely difficult to proofread a document you've written because you see what you expect to see rather than what is, what is there. Now, interestingly, there have been two errors on these slides. Right. We have had these slides checked by four different people. Mm. You know, there are always going to be errors. Uh, and, and the more selective your attention is, the more likely you are to missee uh, what is there, to see what ex you expect to see. So, Focusing your attention and getting this flow state going is very, very important. And finally, training your brain. Training your brain by trusting your brain, by learning things just for the pleasure of learning, and by training your memory when you wish to put it from short term, where it's got a very, very short lifespan, about 20 seconds in short term memory. So within 20 seconds, you either lose it or you consolidate it into long term memory. And once it's in long term memory, it will stay there for the rest of your life. I thought I would leave you with a quote, kind of traditional in these kind of lectures to lend with a quote. 
not trusting your own sagacity, you turn to the sagacity of the sages. Thomas de Quincey, I'm not sure how sagacious I would regard him as, but nonetheless, he did say something which was quite right and quite smart. The memory strengthens you lay burdens upon it and becomes trustworthy as you trust it. So trust your memory and lay burdens upon it. You think back to how you were at 9.15 or so this morning when you first saw that list. The things it must seem like a horrendous and impossible task. Now it would be a piece of cake for you to do it. As you as indeed you, as you proved and you proved on camera. No difficulty whatsoever.